In DAMS, we have started a new series which we call as Radio Pathological Series in which we try to correlate the radiological images and the pathological findings in a disease. We have seen in the recent AIMS exam and even in the previous exams that today the exam pattern in our country is going towards more clinically oriented uh, paraclinical subjects. You have seen they have asked pathological images in the recent AIMS exam. So our intent is to keep, to continue education through this medium of YouTube, through our DAMS study channel and uh, to create more understanding of a disease through co a comparative correlative study. Now with this we start with this case. This is a case of a 48 year old male who presented to a physician with vomiting and headache one month back, was treated but symptoms did not subside and now has seizures. So whenever you have an adult with new onset seizure and a rapidly progressive history, you know, history is of one month old, you know, my mind is thinking of something more aggressive and here is the MRI image for you. This is a T1 weighted MRI image which is done post contrast. This is a post contrast T1 weighted MRI image and you can see an enhancing lesion in the left frontal region which is surrounded by edema. There is extensive surrounding vasogenic edema and you have an enhancing lesion but in between you will see areas which are not enhancing. So that means you have a relatively solid lesion with areas of necrosis and the more interesting point which we all need to remember here is the lesion is crossing the midline via the corpus callosum to the opposite side. Okay. Now once you see a, on an MRI image if I see a tumor crossing the midline it has to be aggressive. So we are looking at an aggressive pathology. Another thing to remember is this tumor is within the brain. It is an intraaxial brain tumor. It is expanding the white matter. It is an intraaxial brain tumor. And if an intraaxial brain tumor is enhancing, that means it has disrupted the blood brain barrier. Again, pointing towards the aggressive nature of this tumor. And the presence of necrosis again tells me this is something aggressive. So, features pointing towards a high grade malignancy are rapid onset, surrounding extensive edema, you have necrotic areas, enhancement, heterogeneous enhancement due to disruption of the blood brain barrier, and crossing the midline. This such appearance in radiology is called as butterfly appearance. We can call it as butterfly glioma and the differential diagnosis would be GBM. Glioblastoma multiforme. Now if you look at the coronal image of the same patient, you can see the tumor within the brain, intraaxial location, in the white matter, areas of enhancement, areas of necrosis crossing the midline to the opposite side. Crossing the again re-emphasizing re the fact that we are looking at a high grade glioma, probably glioblastoma multiforme. And this is the corpus callosum on the sagittal image. You can see the tumor involving the anterior part and heterogeneous infiltrative tumor with areas of necrosis. So my diagnosis on the images available is glioblastoma multiforme. And now I will invite Dr. Sanjeev to discuss the pathological findings in this tumor. Hi. So, <clears throat> you know, let us look at the gross pathology of this tumor and also the microscopy that is the histological examination. Yes, such a tumor on gross pathology will show very correct. So, now I can see this again. I am seeing the gray matter and the white matter, gray matter and the white matter. And I can see that clearly there is a tumor which is within the, which is within the white matter, white matter of the brain. And as you are appreciating this, this is definitely irregular. It is not very regular. It is an irregular tumor. It is having some cystic areas and definitely there are a lot of necrotic areas I can see here. All these are the necrotic areas. And again, I can see this which was again seen on the radiology was it was crossing the midline. It was crossing the midline because it is probably a very aggressive tumor. That is what we can also make sure on the gross <coughs> morphology of this gross morphology of this tumor. Now, if we look at the microscopic examination of these tumor, microscopic examination, looking at this itself, I can see that there is a lot of cellularity that I see. See, the moment I see more cellularity, more cellularity, that is what will tell me what that it is more likely to be an aggressive tumor. Of course, if I look, I will be seeing some mitosis also in this on the high power and <clears throat> this is what I am seeing and in the center, what am I seeing is this is a necrosis. 
these are necrosis so, so you can see the counterpart of the necrotic area that we were seeing in the yes MRI. that is what exactly gave rise to you know your non -enhancing, area. non enhancing areas and surrounded immediately surrounded by the enhancing areas probably because of these lot of vessels mm -hmm. and proliferation was there okay. okay so this necrosis is lined by you can see that this is a cellular and it is lined by the tumor cell that is what we, we it, it is actually not that tumor cells are lining this but they appear to fence these necrotic area the tumor cell will be appearing to fence this is what we sometimes call it as pseudo palisading pseudo palisading is you know just like appearing to fence but they are not actually fencing this but they are surrounding the area you can see here and there few vessels are there here although not very characteristic but definitely you will see small vessel proliferation that will happen microvascular proliferation which is again more important for a glioblastoma where we see microvascular proliferation in other areas of this tumor this is another area where the tumor is showing this is one typical vessel you can see this is a vessel here and it is typically appearing like glomerulus that is what we call it as glomeruloid vessels glomeruloid tuft or glomeruloid vessels that we see in case of glioblastoma so very characteristic histological findings in glioblastoma will be one microvascular proliferation glomeruloid vessels that is your vascular proliferation only giving rise to glomerulus like tuft of a vessel and you will find geographic necrosis and pseudo palisading these will be the histological findings in glioblastoma now to summarize what we have learned today we learned gbm glioblastoma multiforme is the most malignant glial tumor and it has very high mortality on mri if you see the history were very short history patient would present with a very short history and uh, usually it would be if you see uh, uh, radiological images would show white matter expansion tumor would be within the white matter areas of necrosis which are seen corresponding on the pathological image and you see pseudo palisading which i learned from him today and you will also see areas of necrosis on both on uh, radiology and pathology so, uh, so if you see the gross image of this tumor and if you see the radiological image of this tumor you will see how beautifully pathological images and radiological images correlate and this is our message through this video we want you to know that how medicine is all interlinked you have been studying medicine as compartments in your colleges you keep reading pathology separately radiology separately medicine separately and but you don't realize that it is one patient that we are dealing with everything is interlinked that is our purpose for this radiopath series and keep looking out for next video of this series on dams daily channel of youtube if you have not subscribed to our channel so far I would advise strongly to subscribe to our channel. This is an attempt by DAMS to create correlative teaching videos. This is an attempt by me, Dr. Sumer Sethi and Dr. Sanjeev Chitragar, pathologist who is one of the best in his business to create such videos. Thank you very much. Keep looking out for us. If you appreciate our work, do drop in our inbox. We would, ha we would be happy to have feedback from you. Thank you very much.